Good morning. Happy Wednesday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. Okay, time is short. Clinic day today, um, but a beautiful day outside, so I'm excited about that. So let's dig right into the Q&A. Apparently it is squat week, so I have another squat question. <clears throat> this comes from Tony. Tony says, thanks for your videos. I've been applying your model, making great changes in my clients, uh, in my clients' movement that I didn't think were possible. And looking at movement like squatting, I'm trying to work on my own squat and find that with range of motion testing, I've limited hip external and internal rotation. But when I barbell squat at the gym, if I widen my stance and externally rotate, I can break parallel. I think I'm a wide ISA. So where am I getting my external rotation? Okay. So first things first, let's look at what's going on as we're moving through the excursion of a squat and then we'll kind of figure out where you're getting your range of motion from Tony. So remember that as I'm moving through the squat, I would start through this ER moment here and as I pass through the sticking point, through this 90 degrees plus or minus 30 or so, I'm going to move towards internal rotation. So this is just necessary for me to overcome load and, and gravity. So the, the IPA is going to widen there. I'm going to capture more internal rotation of the hip. And then at the end, of course, it's going to be the external rotation. So it's very similar with a squat. Now, since you mentioned barbell squatting, I'm assuming you're going to squat under load, which means that you're probably going to re be reducing some of the relative motion in the pelvis and based on your measures, I'm guessing you're using a, a, a compressive strategy in the pelvis as well. So you've got an anterior compression, which is stealing some IR. You've got posterior compression, which is going to anteriorly orient you. So you're going to lose some, some ER there. So you've got a lot of compressive strategy in your pelvis, but that's advantageous when we're talking about lifting things that, that are really, really heavy and moving under load. Now, if, you, if you're missing ER and IR, and as you move through this sticking point, you're going to have to find some IR somewhere to break parallel. And so under those circumstances, what you can do is actually if you deviate your knee laterally. So a lot of people are going to say, well, you're externally rotating the hip. Through this excursion, you are, but as you move through the squat, and I'm going to try to show this on the camera here. So if I fix the foot to the ground versus the way we would measure in an open chain, old school open chain measurement, when I fix the foot to the ground and the pelvis is lowering, I'm actually moving into internal rotation at the hip. So if I fix this, the knee's going to rotate and I'm going to internally rotate that hip. So when you deviate out, Tony, what you're actually doing is you're recapturing some internal rotation of the hip, which is allowing you to break parallel. So this is a common misconception. And, and so it drives a lot of, lot of ineffective strategies to try to recapture hip ranges of motion. So what I would do Tony, is I would start to work on one, restoring your ability to move the pelvis through its full excursion. So, so you're probably anteriorly oriented. You probably need to learn how to capture the posterior orientation. We've got plenty of videos on YouTube to address that. And then I would start to work on some of this internal rotation um, that you're going to need. And then it'll give you some more variability in your squat if that's your goal. Um, when we're talking about force production, remember that we're trying to reduce the relative motion to allow us to pr produce a lot of force. And so there's going to be some give and take here. So if your goal is to increase the range of motion, you need relative movement between the segments. So between the, sac the sacrum and the ilium and the ilium and the, and the hip and so on and so forth. So again, it's all going to depend on what your goal is. If you want to lift heavy things, you've got to reduce the relative motion movement um, to allow you to produce higher force. If you're trying to recapture relative motions, you might have to sacrifice a little bit of force production in the process, but you also might feel a little bit better as you're moving around during normal activity. So Tony, I hope that gives you an idea of where this range of motion is coming from. If, if you have any questions about this, please go to askbillhartman at gmail.com and submit another question. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow, uh, coffee and coaches conference call. Don't forget that. And we've got some new stuff coming up on iFastU as well. So if you're not on iFestU, uh, get there. I'll see you guys tomorrow.